Buckle up, Star Wars fans. We might have the biggest Star Wars story of the year. <laughs> New Year's jokes. But for real, this is actually some pretty crazy news. We have a scoop and new information about the upcoming Star Wars films that will begin in 2022. Let's go! What's up everybody, it's Josh, welcome back to the channel and a very happy Star Wars Sunday to you if you are watching this video on Sunday. And if you're not, that's totally cool, but you should know we drop sweet Star Wars videos every single Sunday. Also, two things real quick, so just skip ahead a minute if you're one of those people in the comments that's like, bruh, can you just get to it already, bruh? Like, oh my god, bruh. I will be doing a stream tonight on this channel where we're gonna be talking about the fandom, just getting into all the drama, all the tea, as it were. So if that kind of stuff interests you, you wanna know what's going on with the Grey Order, with the Fandom Menace, with Star Wars fans in general, come on by tonight. Also, there's absolutely insane Marvel news. I might drop a small video later today as well talking about that, but either way, we'll be talking about that on Monday for sure. So this scoop is coming from Jason Ward, friend of the channel, and he claims that this is pretty ironclad. He's got this from some pretty good sources of his. Jason did an article about this and a video. I suggest you check out one of the two. Uh, I like the video a lot, and you can kind of just get it straight from the horse's mouth, as it were. So let's just go through some of the stuff Jason was talking about. First up, this will be a series of movies. This will not be a trilogy, but it will indeed start with the first three movies that are slated in 2022, 2024, and 2026. This kind of makes sense when you think about what Kathy Kennedy was saying leading up to episode nine. She kind of mentioned in an interview that they weren't sure if they were going to do trilogies moving forward, that that can be a restrictive form, and that they might just want to make a series of movies. And according to Jason, this is exactly what was already going to be happening with Dan and Dave. If you recall, a lot of the press releases and the talk around Dan and Dave was not about a trilogy, but about a series of films. And we'll talk pros and cons on that in just a little bit here, but let's just get into the other information. Now, I think the biggest piece of information here is that this series will take place around 400 years before the Phantom Menace in what they are calling the High Republic. Damn. Jason said this will still be taking place post Darth Bane's rule of two. So if there are Sith, which I think there will be, they'll be sort of in hiding. Jason also notes that Yoda will likely be a Jedi, but not the wise Jedi master that we see him in during the Skywalker saga. Jason mentioned that according to his source, there may be several new heroes and several new villains. There might not just be one main character. We might be sort of following a bunch of different people around during this series of movies. Now, this also ties into Project Luminous. And what's so cool about this is we've been hearing a buzz around this for the past couple of days, suggesting that Project Luminous is all about Jedi around 400 years before the Phantom Menace going out of the unknown regions and exploring the galaxy and trying to find out more about the Force. And Jason basically corroborates that scoop, saying that yes, that is what Project Luminous is going to be, and Project Luminous will introduce us to a bunch of new characters from that era, but it's hard to say exactly if those characters in the Project Luminous stuff will just be brought over into the films. We might see some of them, we might not. So that's like the official news out there, guys. That's the scoop, that we are going to be going to not quite the Old Republic, but a era before the Yoda Jedi of the prequels. And so to me, on the surface level, this sounds like the prequels 2.0, like we'll be seeing probably Probably a lot of grounded design, you know, Jason talks about that too, grounded design that will be influenced by the prequels. It's that era in the galaxy, which is really cool. Like we're getting basically the prequels 2.0, which I am excited about. So let's speculate a little bit, right? Let's get into speculation town. Uh, what do I think of all this uh, precisely here? Number one, I think that it's a great opportunity for them with merchandising and with connective tissue and with some of the other things that they didn't quite nail in this, what you could call, I guess, phase one of Disney Star Wars. Basically, I'd always said to you guys that one of the things that bugged me was why don't we have like more lightsabers and stuff? Why are there more Jedi? They've really chosen to sort of restrict all of that in the galaxy and kind of just keep it around these two characters, uh, Rey and Kylo Ren, which wasn't my favorite choice. You know what I mean? Like I like the prequel era where there's Gal where there's a uh, Jedi everywhere, Sith, you know, hiding and all this stuff. Like I, I like that a lot. And also, when it came to the Old Republic, I've constantly told you guys that the, one of the big reasons I think that would be so cool for them is that they can establish all these new characters that are Jedi and or Sith, and you have all these Force users, and that would just be great because these are characters that could potentially connect with people, have a lot of different people following those stories, reading books about them, comics, buying the toys, you know, being into that. So the ceiling is really high here. Like, this could be really, really cool, and it feels like they are taking more or less 
the plans that Dan and Dave had started and they're still going to be doing that, which is, I think, a good idea because I don't think they should have just scrapped everything and started over. And the fact that Project Luminous was announced at Celebration last year really shows that that is the direction they were going in, okay? that This is what they wanted to do next. And so there is at least a plan, you know what I mean? Like a plan of what they will be doing next. Now, Jason spoke to this a little bit in his video, but essentially he said that the opportunity here is to have way more of that connective tissue between the ancillary material and the movies. I've talked about this a lot. Christian Harloff has talked about this a lot. Geekdom 101 has talked about this a lot, where basically one of the big issues with the Disney canon is that they downplayed the EU and they did that telling us that the new Disney canon was gonna be super connected. So anything you purchased out there as a fan was gonna tie in, that your experience as a fan was gonna be enriched by these comic books and these books and these things that you could deeply dive into this lore and it would all matter when you watch the films. And so basically, what we were all doing is thinking, when we get out of the movies, we're gonna be that guy in our circle of friends when everybody gets out and they analyze the film that everybody asks the questions to because they know that we read all that other crap. And plainly, Disney screwed that up like they just did like some of it really connects and a lot of the ancillary stuff connects but it really doesn't there's there's a, there's a massive disconnect between it and the films there's just stuff that just clearly didn't work right even Catalyst which is one of my favorite novels the characters are so different than they are in that movie uh Urso Jenna Urso's father is way different in that book than he is in the in the movie they, they just there's not a connective thing going on there but this does present a new opportunity for them to do that better for them especially if they're going to start with the established writers and create from there and spin out from there that is i think a better way to do it and it hopefully will allow that connective tissue to exist more now the seeming negative aspect of this and the thing that i'm concerned about is that you're still really close to George's Star Wars, right? So 400 years before The Phantom Menace, you might feel like you've got a lot of room to play there, and you do, but you also already have Yoda. You already have Darth Bane. You already have Plagueis down the line and Sidious. So you have things and, and a connective tissue to the prequels and to things like that, and you could potentially run into the same problems that you ran into in the sequel trilogy. The sequel trilogy's problems are that there's so many expectations and, and things that fans want after Return of the Jedi, that, that the more you connect, the more you tap into that nostalgia, which is a very powerful drug, you also run the risk of turning off a lot of fans. And personally, I felt like if they went back to the Old Republic, this would have alleviated that. You go thousands of years past, you know what I mean? And then you're so far away from everything that you more or less have a clean slate. Similarly, if you go a thousand years into the future, also creates a really clean slate and you don't need to have those member berries and the nostalgia attachments but it kind of looks like they're gonna try that again on the butt end or, or or behind the prequels you know what i mean they're like slowly filling out the story like that which i guess is kind of cool like but that is my concern right they're so close and with yoda being in there and all these other things that are established they just the leash is tighter than I think they realized. And if they don't respect that, they could come in, uh, they could have a lot of problems. And the last thing that I want to say is that I really, truly hope that George is involved with whatever they are doing. Like, so, you know, they're obviously bringing in these writers. They have this idea for this. Dan and Dave worked on it a bit, but I'm just telling you, they need to bring George in as some kind of a creative consultant, attach his name to it. I think ultimately they need his blessing and they need him to be more engaged than he was with the sequel trilogy. It just leaves too much, uh, too, too many stories out there that can be perceived in a negative light. I think you really need to bring George back in, have him help out. Like if it's George, Filoni, and Favreau, and, and they're like brainstorming that thing together. And George is just there to simply say a couple things here and there, and then put his name on it, and then he's feeling good. That's going to be way better for the fan base. It is the responsibility of Bob Iger. It is the responsibility of Kathy Kennedy and whoever, you know, if she steps down, whoever steps in, it is their responsibility to make us feel like George is okay with this stuff because for a big number of us, that is definitely going to matter. And particularly... If Disney is making sort of an acknowledgement here that the prequel era is more popular than maybe they had first anticipated and going back to that in like a 2.0 way is like their way of showing that, then they damn well better recognize that people love George 
for the prequels. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people out there f that flame the prequels because of George. And, you know, we've seen the George Lucas vs. the People documentary and all that stuff. I get it. But ultimately, you better recognize that that perception has changed and that people really love George. And we need him to be involved, I think, just to quell a lot of the noise with regards to these next movies. Also, one last thing. Maybe I said the other thing was the last thing, but this is really it. Uh, the thing with Project Luminous that I think is really interesting is I would love it if they allowed these writers to sort of create the start point of this canon. Because particularly when it comes to Charles Soule and Claudia Gray, these are two of the literally best creative voices in Star Wars right now. What Charles Soule is doing in the comic books is absolutely amazing. Claudia Gray gets Star Wars. She literally lives and breathes it. And I love all of her work to the point where I've always said, like, if you want, you know, if, if, we're, if we're talking about female representation, if that's something that matters to the studio, why not bring Claudia in to work on the script? She's freaking amazing and she's loved by fans. So I think, frankly, if they would allow these two creatives, right? And, you know, honestly, I've read stuff from all of these people on Luminous except one person. I, I haven't read anything by Justina Ireland, but I hear that Alphabet Squadron is really, really good. So uh, all of these people are really talented. I've read most of their stuff, and I really like what they do. I personally wish James Lucino was on this. James Lucino is the best, in my opinion, the greatest Star Wars writer next to Zahn uh, of all time. He's the number two right behind Zahn. But either way, the, the Project Luminous presents an awesome opportunity for them to actually have creative voices start that narrative. You know, we, we give a lot of crap to the sequel trilogy because it's a little more product than creative vision. I think that's just fair, right? But if Luminous starts with these creative people really just being allowed to tell these stories and being allowed to form what Star Wars is going to be in that time period, I'm all for it. I think that's great. And it could even help the filmmakers if the filmmakers were directed by Disney to look at the early works, to look at the books, and to adapt and to work within what they establish. I think that's the way you build that connective tissue. But now let's shout out Taiwan Cox. Indeed, Bastula Sean wielded a yellow lightsaber. So shout out to you, Tywin. And now let's ask another nerd card question before we get out of here. I want to know what is the species of alien that once made up what was known as the infinite Empire. They're those weird squid alien looking dudes that were super strong with the dark side of the force. Yeah. What is the name of those aliens? Answer that question in the comment section below. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day and I'll see you in the next video.